Hello and welcome back to Pandemic Playground with Dave. So we created our cherry picker, as I believe it's called. And now it's time to make probably a welding crane. That way we can build something tall and weld it all up. Alright, so first off, gonna have to move some things around so we can make a nice little area to make this monstrosity.
so we're back we have the welding crane all set up as you see here and it's operational functional but a little bit off balance all right so here is the welding arm crane truck that i designed here which is very similar to the um, wrecking ball um, crane arm i've created for one of the experiments so instead of putting a wrecking ball on here, we put a nice little welder so we can weld up ground, the ground as you saw in the time lapse, weld up um, some walls or any tall spots basically. So that's kind of the idea. But let me just get to a better viewpoint to showcase this build here. So this thing actually did take a lot longer than expected mainly because the way I built it completely forgot about this very important hinge piece. So I had to lift it up with a piston and then do an attachment and, and so forth. As you saw in the time lapse, um, it's a little bit changed from then too um, because it, the way it was a little off balance. But just to get go through it really quickly, we have the base of the rover itself filled with three wheels on each side, total of six, only the front to steer. And we have a rotor right in the middle uh, with the programming block, some connectors for the top piece. So the top piece here, um, locks into this connector right here and there to the top piece here and then it goes into the cargo containers it originally was a large cargo container but since it was too big too heavy it was kind of lopsided um, the center of mass on this thing is not ideal but we're gonna have to get that fixed eventually but at least this way it flows into these two cargo containers into this conveyor and then eventually to all these things here um, like the pistons hinge another conveyor all the way to this um welding tip here and that is pretty much how it's done and of course it has that programming block so we can have the script for the cockpit piston and hinge and and rotor um script so we can turn the thing left and right up and down and everything like that fairly easily a few things i should have done i think i should have made this diagonal piece more into a piston so it can extend instead um, right now it can't really extend too much um, it has its um, limitations based on how much long this is second thing is I could probably make the welding arm piece a little bit longer instead so it could touch closer to the bottom so just jumping into the industrial cockpit here we have to first unlock the connector that's down there so we'll do that and here you'll see I can move it left and right very easily and if you can't see my hand I'm actually using my mouse to go left and right and then um, up and down it's gonna be the welding arm part itself but the crane up and down is gonna be based on um, W and S it's a little bit finicky in terms of the balance because I guess the wheels the wheel is kind of off a bit too it needs a larger wheelbase in a way and a longer wheelbase to make it a little more um stable but the problem is with using the script it always kind of does this anyways so that's also some of the issues so to kind of resolve that i created this little hinge system in the back here and that's supposed to lock in a crane truck so that we don't move too much but doing it with hinges probably wasn't the brightest idea because um if I could show you guys, um, I should have did a timer on it so then it could easily rotate all these things here the correct way so that this brings it that um, down to the ground without any big issues uh, where we have to kind of fold some of them down, fold it back up, the hinges I'm talking about and then eventually um, it'll be touching the ground like getting there <laughs> it's getting there um, like so but the only reason why I put it with hinges because I wanted to tuck it away into the back like it was on its default but now as you see here it's gonna touch the ground and we can lock in from here it's a nice and compact way of doing it instead of using a piston honestly I didn't have a spot for a piston to do this on the truck because of the way it swing the way it swings with the arm here or the top piece if you put a piston it's not going to be able to lock so the downside of using a hinge with the landing gear system is this you see what i'm moving at left and right it's still a bit of a wobble 
um, to the whole entire thing. Usually when you're using a piston and a landing gear, it actually holds a lot better than this. As you see here, it's kind of like falling off of the positioning of it, which is not ideal. But you definitely need it because the way it's built currently, as I mentioned before, it's very unbalanced. So if you put too much um, items into the welder, it actually kind of it actually falls forward that way um, and eventually falls down too too low and it's gonna break something so that was another that's one of the small issues we had <laughs> with this thing but of course balancing out is the biggest problem maybe I need more four wheels and backwards wheels or, or wheels in the front wheels in the back or I need to put some weight somewhere but um, it's kind of hard to determine and it wants to put this thing together as quickly as possible but it did take me quite some time to build it. it took me I think two and a half hours to three hours well mainly because we don't have a jetpack it's gonna be harder to reach the top area so that's the biggest problem I had there and of course when I'm building it I did damage it using my other um, system there which is the cherry picker I just kind of crashed into it and luckily it didn't break everything but it did damage it so I had to kind of repair it too um, and it, it worked out okay I think this, this welding arm will work out decently. I think the biggest thing I should change is probably the welding arm so it can be a little bit lower. So it can e touch the ground a little bit better than what it can do now. So it, it, let's just say for an example, if I bring this down all the way down, so that's the lowest it can go. It's um, not too bad, but it's, it's off probably a block or two. So if I put uh, more conveyors right inside of it, um, it'll be a little bit better. So what's inside of it that's covered by half blocks is just basically um, these conveyors here or conveyor tubes. All right, looks like I am losing oxygen because of the environment, which is not good. And I'm losing health, so I need to put on my helmet actually, which I'm not sure why it was off to begin with. Usually have them have it kept on. Uh, so let's heal up a little bit and. I don't have a ship or anything or a rover to really save me from this issue. Um, this one has a hatch system that could potentially work. But of course we have a problem here where um, it looks like it's out of batteries or it's off. And plus there's no real air system in there anyways to be honest. So why is this off? Is it is it out of batteries? So that's quite interesting. Um, usually, this rover, I think this rover was fully charged, but whatever is going on with the crane on here, it drains the hell out of the batteries for everything. So that's a little bit unfortunate. So I probably can't attach these batteries on here to temporarily move it, but this thing is a battery depleting system uh, for whatever reason, and probably don't need this anymore. Uh, but it is what it is in, in some ways. But other than that, what I worked on, with the t and, and you saw in the time lapse, is this little ramp system. So generally, what I normally build is actually a ramp system using the light armor slope blocks, and then attach it with the light armor slope blocks two by one by one tips, and that generally creates a nice little slope. But sometimes that's not enough. So something this large, some it, it wasn't too great to climb up those kind of platform. So I created this thing here, which is the catwalk connected to a hinge system here to create a smaller kind of slope for a ramp and it kind of gave me an idea actually and that idea is going to be um, probably use that to make the bridge if I make enough hinges if the weather um, gets better probably use like a multiple amounts of hinges and then build um, the, the a catwalk on the hinge itself and then make it probably three by three or a three width four width five, or five width let's just go with odd numbers five width or something like that make it long enough and then pretty much have it fold onto the next piece of it so hopefully that could kind of work out i think i'm gonna have to make it kind of like a ramp up first so we can put the hinge on a vert on a horizontal like this so that it could touch the ground across from there. So that's when we're going to think about making that bridge. Um, but who knows when that's going to be to be honest. Because I, f I do really want to build this house. But 
I'm honestly not in a building mood because I took a long time building this. So we're going to build this later down the road. Um, but I was thinking also, I did put on the mod for abandoned settlements. So I, I really do want to look for that and see if that exists in my game. So I, I believe it does work on Pertam, the wasteland. So um, I, I'm, I did explore a little bit and I didn't see anything. But I do believe it is six kilometers away so that that's when things spawn um from from where you are basically all right so the weather let up a little bit so that's looking good so i did a little research really quickly to see if the abandoned settlements are working and it should be working fine so maybe we'll take a quick glance around to see if we can find anything um anything interesting at least Either a settlement or something else. So it looks like these are... There is an unknown signal over there. But I believe that's probably over the crevice. Yeah, that's over the crevice. Unless we build a ramp. We could ramp over this with the motorcycle. But I doubt I'm going to do that. But we could use the bike to kind of travel a little bit. To see if we can find some settlements um, around the area. Or maybe even some cobalt. Because I think we're going to need some cobalt sooner or later. Um, down the line. Um, but we don't have a drilling rig whatsoever because that thing um, just decided to break previously, which was the big red truck. So we're going to probably not rebuild that, but build something s different. So we have something here. Uh, I'm not even sure what this is. It's probably... I don't even have my drill. So that's a little bit um, unfortunate. So I'm not going to be able to look for ores that way. But... Let's continue to kind of drive around, have a nice little drive to kind of explore the area and see if we can find some nice little settlements. And some settlements can be, and that was really, really dangerous, almost kind of flew over. Some settlements, I believe, um, have defenses and I didn't bring my rifle. So that's a bit of an issue uh, potentially, but we'll see what happens. Um, very not prepared for this, to be honest. There's a SPRT claim. Okay, so maybe that is a settlement. Oh, where did it go? I think that is a settlement that actually finally spawned because I traveled around more. Because I think I was staying in my base too much. So that it, it, it didn't want to spawn unless that's some kind of default um, system. Uh, it was two kilometers away. I'm not even sure which direction. It just kind of blinked on and and off. So... We're gonna have to keep our GPS or, or our HUD up so we can find. Okay, it's right there. So it's behind that mountain, which is actually a mountain that I've actually been through a couple of times. So yeah, that's an interesting thing here. So I think it's behind it. If it's one kilometer away. Yeah, it looks like it's behind it. Hopefully it's not under it. So let's just see what that's gonna be. It's it likely or will probably destroy me if is any drones or any other or turrets or anything like that so i hope that's not the case um but it looks like we found it here uh, if i if i do die of course i'll respawn but the biggest problem is i'm gonna have to travel back here just to get my bike back which is probably not ideal so we are a few kilometers away not too too far and i don't Feel like I'm gonna get shot at so maybe I can hop off of the bike here and I think maybe I should really make a rover with a respawn pod so then that way if I do get shot at at least I get spawned right next to my um, rover so it looks like a rusty little wind turbine um, settlement here that's pretty interesting um, hopefully there's no traps that's gonna blow me up but it's, it's possible and I, I think we can just get some of these as parts too. So it has a battery and everything. Oh, that's interesting. 
This looks cool. So, mine's a rusty little base. Um, <laughs> it kind of doesn't work out too well because I've been here a couple of times and this wasn't here before. So, who has come onto my server and started building these things? <laughs> of course, that's not the case. Um, I think I'm safe. So, yeah, let's just take the bike. I don't feel like walking. Alright, so, so we can confirm that it is working, which is great. So now we can explore per time a little bit more to get the sites and also the and explore these settlements um, that are on here. So this is the antenna beacon that's kind of um, show me where it is, but it's only temporarily flashing. And actually, that is a turret here. It looks like, but it's um, pretty much abandoned as it's abandoned settlements. So there's a turret here. Um. And it's mostly steel plates that I can probably gather from there. So let's just keep going. We're probably not going to grind these things down so we don't need to park just yet. But I think eventually maybe I'll just be doing some scavenging instead, instead of drilling. So maybe I'll grab most of my parts um, through here, from here, or from the little um, settlements here. And then that way it'll make it a little bit more fun um, to explore more of the, the land and also the environment. So this here looks like a little bit of a little bunker base and there's a cargo container here. And I can actually access it and it gives me a whole bunch of stuff. So that's interesting. So that's an interesting, uh, that's a good way to get parts. Uh, we definitely can stop drilling and, and use these settlements and grind them down for parts if we really need to. Unfortunately, most of them just gives us little minimal parts because it's only the frame of it. So. Girders, steel plates, um, I thought I saw motors, you know, things like that. So that's kind of useful. It's not too bad. So we definitely can change it up a little bit and do that instead of drilling. Um, just exploring the lands. We probably need to build a bit of a rover, I would think. So we could travel with a survival kit, some weapons, and um, some cargo. And also, if need to be, or need be, um, some kind of grinding... Um, rover too so that when we run into these um settlements we have the ability to grind it down easily without having really to get out of our rover and hand grind it down so i want to know or want to see other ones so this one was interesting got a decent amount of parts out of it which is cool so let's hope another base spawns so we can take a look at that and then we can call it a day from there um to move on with our adventure all right, we made it almost back. Um, yeah, it wasn't too far of a travel. Yeah, I think really having a, a ship would be a lot faster to travel with, but this motorcycle is not too bad. It's um, I, it's set to be not too fast because I don't want it to just kill myself. Um, so it runs at like 50 meters per second for the most part, which is it's not terrible, but it kind of works out. I need to put some kind of docking station here. Oh, look. Is the At King Claims. So I got close to my base and one spawned three kilometers away. So I, I do want to take a look at that. So let's go see what that looks like. I should probably get back and get a rifle. <laughs> but why not ignore that, right? <laughs> Alright, so that's the Bailey Claim, which is what we saw previously. And I believe the marker that I saw is this way, but it's three kilometers away, so it's a bit of time to get to. And okay, so I know I said I didn't want to increase the wheels because I don't want to, or speed, I didn't want to kill myself, but I think I do want to increase that now. Um, let's just increase it to 300 for now. And let's just zoom our way through. But did it spawn in my original spot? It might be because our our copper and iron marker is all the way over there, and we are hitting 80 meters per second here. So that's a little crazy, and I'm doing little jumps here and tear. Um, I hope it shows up soon. Oh, oh, it showed up right there. So let's just slow down. Okay, there you go. It was near that little green tree, so that's a good mark to be it. Hopefully, there's no, um, what's it may call it, on turrets and everything on, because 
I will probably get destroyed, but we're only three kilometers away from it, so it's not too bad. And it looks like it has a couple of settlements or bases outside of it. It looks like... Oh, it does have a weapon. That's not good. And there goes my bike. Oh, no, that was not... Oh, man. Get up, brought my rifle. Looks like this place is actually filled with turrets. Ow. Now, I gotta run back and get... <laughs> Get my things. Uh, the worst part is when I die, this happens, and this happened to my space survival adventure as well. But it also does this to me here too. I don't know why. Um, it, it could be the the way I've kind of put the medical center or something like that. I don't know. It's kind of weird that it just default changes my colors. Um, I gotta kind of look into that and see what what that's all about. So I don't know if I can make it back in time, but um, I'm probably going to lose all that stuff that's in there. Um, but we'll see what's going to happen. All right, it was quite the travel. Got my um, body bag or my backpack and I actually did bring my trusty rifle with a bit of ammo. So how well can I shoot these things? Probably not too well. Um, Usually what I do in terms of fighting bases, I do kind of like bum rush them with my jetpack. But we don't have that on, so we got to find a way around the the turrets. And the turrets are right in front of me right here. If I go around, I might be able to get around to a building or so. I don't know if that's the turret. It might be a turret right there. Probably not. If that's a turret, it would... Oh, well, no, no, it should be a turret. Hopefully I'm shooting it. I'm just going straight iron sight here, so a little bit hard to see. But nothing. Oh, there goes one turret. Okay, that's on fire, so that's good. That was a turret. That might be a turret that or a laser. Look, kind of like a laser antenna, but I'm gonna shoot it anyway since it looks like I have a decent shot at it. And I'm dropping the SPRT's um reputation too so that's kind of telling me that it's hitting it so that's kind of a, a little bit of a trick to that so i don't think that's a turret itself that i'm shooting this one where is that one shooting me at i don't want to get too close because once i get too close i'm for sure just going to get shot at <laughs> and, and it's going to be a long way back again which was not ideal okay so that's turret maybe i do a jump shoot jump shoot kind of situation here yeah, I think that's kind of the way to do it now. Oh, just got shot. Pop, 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 pop. <laughs> Hopefully it'll take it down sooner or later. Ow. Oh, what is going on? It's shooting my unknown signal down. I've never seen that before. That is actually pretty interesting. <laughs> that it decided to shoot my unknown signal down. Or a unknown signal down. I think that one's a turret there, and there's one all the way back there. I think that's all we have to deal with. So, yeah, sorry, I'm just jumping up and down to kind of spot it. Not ideal, but I don't want to kind of die again and run back. It's not like I... Oh, okay. But now my health is low, which is not good. If I take another few shots, I'm definitely going to die. Which I don't want. Because I'm going to have to run back. Well, I still got to run back. Which is the biggest pain in the in the butt. I should actually... I don't know why I wasn't thinking about bringing a rover with me. Because... Actually, no. My croc rover has no battery. So that's the main reason why I just decided to walk it. Um, three kilometers walking. Not terrible. But ain't great either. <laughs> and that was a turret back here. So... Maybe we shoot that. Oh, okay, cool. We shot that down. Oh, this one right here. So I can just shoot it down a little bit. I think we we'll, should be safe, hopefully. But if not, um, we're gonna have to travel our butts back here all over again, or maybe come back eventually when I rebuild a motorcycle or so. Okay, I think we're good. Um, probably should have just remade a motorcycle, and. 
and traveled here. Maybe I can scavenge some parts here and make a motorcycle? That's a possibility? Maybe? I feel like I'm gonna get shot very soon and if it does happen, um, I'm gonna be a little bit mad. <laughs> Alright, so let's just kind of sneak in. No, I think we're okay. We should be okay. I, I'm for sure if I grab these things, um, I'm going to run out space. Oh yeah, it has a lot of metal grids. If I could get some batteries, I should be able to make a motorcycle and can make it back. Um, do I have power cells? Oh, actually, no, I only have one power cell. That's not enough. So if I can grab some more power cells... I might be able to create a bike to get back. So, is there anything in here that has a power cell? I highly doubt it because, yeah, I highly doubt it be only because in order to make a power cell or get a power cell, you have to make it. Um, so that's a little unfortunate. Yeah, it's definitely no power cell. And of course, if there's a battery here, we can't. We can't um, unlink it also, I mean to grind it down because you're going to destroy the power cell that way anyway. So these are little cool little homes actually. Looks like it's got a little bit of kitchen, you got your beds here, a nice little view. Uh, oh, we got your shower and bathroom, a rusty tin can there, and this is an air vent, yeah it's some air vents there, so that's cool. Well it says access denied, I'm sure. So, hmm, at least it's a good way to get some ammo from here. What is this? Is this a similar thing as before? Oh, refineries. Basic refinery here. More basic refinery. So if there's an assembler, maybe you can make some power cells. <laughs> that might kind of work out. Um, But we still need batteries or a windmill to kind of... Oh, or a turbine, not with no turbine to power up the station. So how much does what what is the cost of a turbine? Um not crazy. And it can generate power. So we can make an assembler potentially. If we are if we really want to do it, we can do it that way. I think we might be able to just walk it back anyways, to be honest. Um, another nice little spot here. Nothing crazy. So, yeah, it's good to know that the settlement is working. So that we can always try. Yeah, we definitely have to make a, a more of a better traveling vehicle so we can come back or explore more of these um little stations. I think this is the yeah this is the unknown signal that got shot down. I've actually never seen that happen before. That's the first time I've seen an unknown signal come down on a on an enemy turret or or in a station's turret. <laughs> so that was pretty interesting and pretty cool. In terms of my bike, I believe all of that's been destroyed. So let's see if I can find it. Alright, so yeah, I couldn't really find um, the bike or, or, or whatever was left of it. So let's just gonna make a little GPS marker here and just type in settle settlement. And I eventually will create some kind of vehicle and come back um, to this year. So uh, I'm going to take my walk of shame home. All right. So I'm going to head back to the respawn pod location, which is here. About three kilometers away. <laughs> Quite the walk, but um, that's my own doing anyways. All right. So we're back at base. Um, took quite some time to walk back. It wasn't the best thing in the world to do, um, but yeah, it kind of worked out in some ways. I should likely bring a vehicle with me next time. Probably have to build some kind of exploration vehicle uh, with me. I just lost the steel plate there. Anyway, we're probably just going to put this all back together here so we don't fall down this hole. And kind of build it out. So we definitely need to make this a little bit bigger because we're building a house. This is going to be uh, quite tiny, which is not a thing I want. I want something um, decent sized, actually. Alright, so I think that's that's actually not too too bad. Um, I'm not sure how much uh, steel plates I have on here. Oh, we have a decent amount, 702. So we could kind of just um, move this thing and um, actually 
weld some things down. We should probably fix that ground first, but kind of been ignoring that. And when I do this, it's going to be a bit interesting because the battery is right there. And there's a chance that I might actually just run right into it, which is not going to be ideal. So let's move it a little closer, park this thing here. Hopefully the um, landing gear can lock on soon. And if it can, I'm going to start welding it now and see how far I can get with whatever uh, amount of steel plates we have here. Okay, so it looks like I need to drop my wheels down. No, I don't need to drop my wheels. What am I talking about? It's yellow. <laughs> so let's lock it in. Pop out, get in here. Actually, before I do that, um, yeah, there's a lot of ladder systems that he, I put here so that I can climb up. But let's just put our steel plates in there and then up into this thing here. So we don't need to connect to the connector because we have everything in this little small cargo containers there. And we can bring this guy down and start welding. So I think. I think I just, I don't know how that broke everything, but it just did. And we are not low enough. So that's definitely why I mentioned that I need to make the um, welding arms to be a little bit lower. So then we can reach the bottom here. So what I've been doing is, of course, just lowering um, the wheels so that I can get lower. So the welding arm can actually weld. And how did I... And how did I manage to break these blocks when I kind of ran into um, the the merge the battery in the merge block? So that was kind of weird. So let me grab some here. Okay, uh, let's fix this really quick and see how far we can get with kind of welding this thing down together. So it's a nice little view here. It's not too bad, as you see here. Um, I'm locked in, but it's a little bouncy still. So we are a little close to the battery, so we definitely don't want to hit that again. So let's just lift this up, move it that way, and then move it down. This is so bouncy, but it, it kind of works out. It's not too bad. It's a nice little view here in front, so you can see the welding, which is not too bad. Um, you can always go third person and see all the welding, as you as I, as you see here. And honestly, with a rover to do something like this, it's still a little too slow for what I would prefer. Honestly, um, most of the time, um, ships are a lot faster because you can maneuver to a lot of different areas. Um, you do these kind of things. Ooh, almost done that too quick. Um, but now, it, since we have to keep locking onto the ground, it, that just creates more time wasted. Um, in terms of welding, but I mean, it's doing its job. Not too bad. It's a lot faster than probably welding it by hand, to be honest. And of course, once we get to a point where it's too high up to reach anything, of course, we can always tilt, tilt it up like this. Um, hopefully I'm not breaking thing. Tilt it up like this and actually just, um, weld that way. But for now, I mean, we just got to keep switching seat to seat. But of course, that's the struggle I made for myself, to be honest, anyway. So that's, um, how we're going to proceed with it. Now we should drive right into that spot. I'm um, going to check what's behind me before I do this. So I'm also thinking, should I put a gyroscope on this thing so we can spin this thing a little bit easier um, or turn the whole entire um, rover a little bit better in that sense. Actually, I should bring up the welding arm. So that we don't crash into anything. We'll just not too high up there. Now we can kind of just drive right in. So um, yeah, it, again, it's not very balanced. This whole entire um, crane or, or welding system. Um, I got to kind of figure out where the center of mass is and build it a little bit better. And I am a little too short right now for some reason. I think that's better. Just crashed right into it, but luckily nothing broke, which uh, a little bit scary. All right, so that worked out. So we just gotta get right into the middle. I think now I'm too high, so 
what is going on? Okay, I think that's good. But always a bit of a struggle here, kind of locating where that connector is. Here we go. I think we're good. Okay, so we're going to lock in. Um, Those two are locked. This one, oh, I, I locked in by parking it. All right, that works out. <laughs> and now that is how I pretty much store this truck and get my uh, materials and inventory for it. So let's just go to my small cargo and we'll just go do some steel plates. I think we're we're getting close to running out steel plates um, here actually. So it looks like you now we still have 4,000 or so. We're probably going to need a whole lot more. So we definitely should produce a whole bunch of them here. And I think we're going to run out of iron really quickly by doing this. But um, if we do run out of iron and um, material to build, we're definitely going to go out and start scavenging. But first, we're going to need uh, some kind of vehicle to do that. So I think I'm going to call that a day for today. And hopefully the, the next episode, I'll probably start building a house with whatever materials we have left. Or maybe potentially build a rover um, that I can travel with. Um, that moves a little quicker than what it is has a survival kit and some turrets and maybe a grinding uh, machine there so that way we can grind down some materials and collect it from those abandoned settlements that do exist here in the wastelands all right guys thank you very much for watching you guys know what to do of course that's hit the thumbs up like the video consider subscribing to the channel hit that notification bell drop some comments as we appreciate them all and of course i'll see you guys next time bye